Let's jump right in here and have a look at what's new in the studio. I have 10 new paintings for you today, and I'm going to uh, go through each one by one so that you can see all the details. But first, let's have a look around. When um, friends and uh, collectors come to my studio, they are taken in with all of what's here and the space that I create in. So I want to give you a sense of that. Not everyone can come to the coast of Virginia and get to experience this magical place that I paint in. And so I would like to share that uh, no matter how far away you are. <laughs> my studio is a 30 foot sunroom that overlooks my pond and uh, garden. And as you can see, I have three walls of windows I eat my lunch out there on the deck. And back there is my kitchen. Um, and on that easel is a commission that I'm finishing up. And another painting that I'm finishing up. And on the floor are several paintings that I'm going to show you here shortly. I'm using a palette knife here, so much of the paint is put on rather heavy, stroking with the, the side of it. And I also use a, um, I also use the palette knife to draw, so you can see the etched lines in the paint. And I, in addition, I use a, um, a glazing technique so I'll put the thin paint over top of, uh, for example, the cool blue that's back here underneath in this cloud was put on a very translucent paint. And then when the opaque paint goes back on top of it, you can see the opaque paint leaning on top. So I have um, pastel, I was a pastelist exclusively for, um, oh gosh, 20 years early in my career. And so a lot of people will see the, the influence of the pastels in my oil paintings, which this is an oil painting. Let's go in here close. So when I put the paint on with the palette knife, the, the feeling of that kind of an application is similar to working with pastel. And so I'm combining those two, those different, um, oh, how do I want to say, ways of experiencing the, the, the feeling, the emotion that goes into the painting. Let's back up just a little bit more. There you go. So down the, down the road from my studio, I live, I can walk to the Chesapeake Bay and many of my, um, paintings over the last 20 years have been uh, done plein air on the beach in between the inland waterway and the bay. And so plant my feet in the sand, put the easel down, let my head soar in the clouds and paint my heart out. And so all of the time, all of the years that I've painted in that way gets all encapsulated in my cells and now I find painting in the studio from the feelings, from the, from the cellular memory of that, if you'll, if you'll uh, stretch with me on my interpretation of the words here, enables me to yet again soar my spirit up into the clouds and plant my feet back in the sand and conjure up this emotional landscape from inside myself. I just uh, fathom myself being out here under the stars waiting for the sun to set. And um, as you can see, the paint is, it radiates such different light. I'm looking at the screen to shoot it and then I'm also looking at the canvas directly and it strikes me as different in both ways with the way I um, 
use the layered paint. I, I don't even know how many layers of paint are on here, probably 20 or 30 layers of paint. In this painting, you can also see my use of charcoal. So um, a lot of times I, I get asked about what the lines are about. <laughs> so the, the secret behind these lines, these charcoal lines, I'm using willow charcoal and I'm also using, as I mentioned in the other um, painting, I'm also using the, the blade of the knife, like right here in the pink, you can see that the blade of the knife is carving the paint, but adjacent to it, there are willow charcoal lines. Now, someone asked me the other day, well, why do you put lines in there? <laughs> so here's the thing behind the lines. I, I, I work a lot with dreams, and to me, a, unraveling a dream is like unraveling a ball of yarn. And the more you pull on the thread, the more you can interpret uh, what the possible meanings of each word or um, each little nuance might be. So when I paint, this translates, this whole idea of unraveling translates into drawing. This is how I use my drawing. So uh, I will um, do a kind of an automatic writing. And the willow charcoal is very soft and responsive to my touch. So if I push hard, I get a darker line. And if I back away and have a delicate touch, I get a very pale line. And if I'm drawing in the wet paint, as I am in these examples, it is uh, actually carving a physical line at times into the paint. <clears throat> so for me, putting the, uh, putting the, li the linear element into the paint is like, um, is like bringing the dreams to life because when I start to draw, the painting starts to come to life. I could be stuck on a painting. I don't, I don't paint with my front lobe in a thinking kind of way. I let the creator uh, guide my hand. And so the automatic writing allows it to get onto the canvas without my thinking brain interfering with the flow. I guess that would be a good way to say it. And the little magical drawings are dreams, like snippets of dreams, parts of these threads of imagination that take form. So here we can see, um, you know, textures where I've drawn into the pink paint, the yellow orangey is below it. Here's a little piece of um, charcoal etched into it. And uh, when it all comes together, it forms this magical place of being in the heart, hence the title, Resting Place. And I will say, Resting Place was a title that I used, oh my gosh, maybe 40 years ago on a little pastoral landscape. And I've never wanted to use that. I never even thought about using that title again until I finished this painting. And then all of a sudden there was the, the word again. And I thought, oh my God, I've painted another version of Resting Place. And so it has a personal uh, dream interpretation meaning for me. So that meant to me that I had come full circle on uh, one of the personal uh, life issues that there aren't words for it, but that drive my paintings. The next two paintings are a, a pair. Uh, this one is called Happiness Sprouting. And this one is called Rebirth. And they are, as you can see, they are sisters, <laughs> if you will. 
they are related in terms of the, the symbolism, the dream interpretation, uh, and they're also obviously related in terms of color. They have been on and off the easel. Let's talk about one before the other so I don't have to hold it. They have been on and off the easel, uh, oh gosh, for the last, hmm, I've lost track, two years maybe. Some paintings have a mind of their own. Some paintings just jump off the paintbrush and are done. But most paintings, because I, because I paint with my heart, I let the emotion of the present moment guide my hand. And this gives the painting itself and the internal things that are going on that I don't really have um, front lobe experience of knowledge of what it is I paint so that I can discover <laughs> what the heck is going on with me. And sometimes, I guess most of the time, I'm the last one to figure it out. Uh, this one is really heavily painted. And I want to take you up close so that you can see the the really impasto strokes. She's just amazingly uh, Again, you can see where I'm drawing. I'm also using an oil paint stick, which is like a heavier oil crayon. There is willow charcoal in here. Uh, and this, this one really plays to the theme of blooming and the meadow. So the meadow, the meadow is part of my main symbolism for this fertile time of life when the present moment is so precious and uh, I just, I guess, try to keep the sacredness of the precious moment in my heart. It helps me get through the things that I can't change. <laughs> and there's, a, there's enough of those. So all of those things that I wish I could change, um, they get worked out on the canvas. Let's go up a little close. This one has more of the corals, but again, you can see how heavy the texture is if I come over here on the side. some of the light and it has the wonderful contrast to the uh, to the pinks. I call these opera pink <laughs> because they are just so um, oh lipstick I guess is the word I'm looking for. And I really like the juxtaposition of color so in here we have a really vibrant teal against this deep um, violet and then the yellowy green and it just it all plays well together and gives gives your eye a um, a joyful thing to behold so when you step back my intention is for you to do what i do is for you to mix the colors as you view the art in your mind's eye and when you do that, um, you engage your whole mind, body, spirit flow. So all of your chakras vibrate at different wavelengths, frequencies. And these colors, so when I mix the orange and the teal adjacent to each other, this corresponds with the orange of the second chakra. That's the vibration of the... That chakra, it's an earth color. And the teal is up here, uh, just above the heart, approaching the throat. So self-expression, heartful self-expression. And down here, 
in the creative set, in the creative chakra. So these two chakras balance each other. And that's what's going on in this part of the painting. It's repeated elsewhere in the painting, obviously. So this is the, this is the how it works. And this is kind of the why you feel so energized when you view the art, because what's engaging in you is that your eye is taking all this in. And remember, we have more than five senses. We have all the, you know, the eyes, ears, nose, smell, like that, all the, the physical senses, but we also have uh, the sixth sense, the, all the intuitive senses that parallel those. And whether or not you're all, all that much aware of using those other um, intuitive senses, when you view a piece of art, you engage that automatically. And so you can feel that in your body. You, can, you might feel it as uplifting. You might feel it as energy. For me, I can taste it. Uh, I always feel like I want to say I can taste the colors. So different people have different ways of experiencing the color and the energy of a work of art or of walking out. I mean, you know, this is directly related to the time that I spend in my garden and the colors of the flowers. I might sit there with my cup of tea in the afternoon and have a zinnia, a single zinnia that just has colors that are so luscious, I could eat it. You know, this this orange and this um, pink, and they all kind of coalesce on one flower petal, and I go, oh my God, I've got to have more of that. <laughs> I could sound like a crazy woman, but that's where my paintings come from. And so this is this is why it's so palpable. Uh, <laughs> it's coming from a palpable place. This piece is called Sacred Garden and also subtitled uh, New Turf. So the series, the New Turf series uh, is a series of abstracts that I have been exploring probably for the last six or eight months and they felt uh, different to me. Like I've landed in a new landscape and I don't know what it is yet. And so this is where I'm exploring. And this one has been on and off the easel a couple of times. I thought I had her finished and then she would get quiet for a while and then she would come back up on the easel and say, oh, you know, a little more here and a little more there. And she came back to life um, this week and uh, some of these, it's a little bit, it's still a little wet in here. Um, so you can see how I could just paint with my finger like this to take some of this fairy dust. When I, when I put her back on the easel uh, last week, I, I hadn't seen the figure. So when I stepped back and, and looked, I saw, oh my gosh, there's a head and an arm and a magic wand and a gown. And she's standing over this magical garden. And it's like, a, it's, it's very much, interpreting a painting is very much like interpreting a dream that you wake up and you kind of go, what was that? And then if you take the pen in hand and you write, oh, I don't know, it was pink or something. And then as soon as you write something, something else comes out, some other feeling comes out and you start writing and then suddenly it starts to unravel on the page like, like the drawing that I was talking about in the first painting. And that's how this magical fairy garden appeared. So when I... I actually had titled the painting Sacred Garden, New Turf, uh, number four, uh, early in the year, probably January, but she looked different. 
she was very heavy and she didn't have any of the, fa the fairy dust <laughs> or the magic. In fact, I couldn't even see that she was present in this, in this piece. So <laughs> let's see if I can take you up close and let you see some of the strokes. It's a wonderful combination of the, the airy pinks and then the really earthy orange and earthy greens. And I think that's what gives this piece so much of its uh, counterbalance uh, or magic because there's connection to the earth in these, in these orangey areas and some of the green earth. But then there's these magical pinks that just jump down in here and give the whole other dimension so a connection to earth and a connection to a magical um, heavenly spirit. She even has, I, I can just hear someone putting in a comment, I just now saw it, that the little pink heart down here in the foreground is, is um, almost like a butterfly and then kind of mutes down into the into the foreground. Magical. This is a portfolio that I am really nuts about, that I've been dying to show to someone and I've never had the occasion to actually show in person. So <laughs> we're gonna do the in-person showing on video. Actually, when someone comes to my studio, there's so much in the studio that I never think to open this portfolio. So you're gonna get to see a couple of the pieces that I'm really nuts about and that drive a lot of the rest of what's going on in here. So these are oil on paper and I'm gonna set a couple of them out so you can see a couple of them together. These are uh, 30 inches high by 22 inches wide. And in, let's see if I got it in the right place. Okay, sorry about that. This, the energy of these pieces, it comes off of the easel as I am working on the other, uh, the larger paintings. So I don't, I don't paint small very much anymore because I can't contain, I can't contain the energy to, to a smaller scale than this anymore. This painting is, um, is like a, to me, it's like a giant thumbnail sketch. So when I'm painting the larger pieces, I have to have an orchestra going on. I can't just paint one at a time and finish one and move on to the next. It doesn't work that way for me. I have to work on multiple pieces. They each have their own song and dance and I move from one to the other. And while I'm waiting for one to dry, or for the thoughts about the other to um, incubate, I often will take colors that are on the palette left over and just try, try a giant thumbnail with, with uh, something that's in my craw at the time. So this is Blossom, I don't know what number it is. There's a, it's a Blossom series. Uh, so there's six of these that blossomed off of the floral pieces that I was showing you earlier. Here you can see, you know, maybe some suggestion of what me, might be the garden or a structure. The houses play a big role in my dreams. And also in this, I'm using a combination of the willow charcoal again. So the unraveling dream is letting, is letting the dream come to life. So for, for many years, I've used my art and my dreams in, in collaboration with each other in, how do I want to say, um, in making them real. So dreams, we've always regarded dreams as that imaginary place where you go when you sleep and you don't know what it is. And it doesn't translate in a literal way. 
And so over the years, over the decades of working with my dreams, I find that they are much more malleable than I initially thought of them. So if I can bring something to life, maybe um, this starts to have a framework, the, 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 the color might start it, but as soon as I put the box around it, it starts to frame and give structure to, you know, a very nebulous, um, ethereal thing. This is also one of the blossoms. You can see you can see the intense, uh, the power of the intense energy as it comes off of my hand. I I um, focus on giving my brush hand to the creatrix and not trying to um, insert too much of my own agenda. So to allow that. Uh, collaborative partnership with the, the inner and the outer or heaven and earth and just to let it flow through me. And that, in an, that is the nutshell, the whole nutshell of the practice. My art practice is really about practicing, uh, allowing myself to be um, the vessel for this creative energy. And here's an example of it. Here's another example of it. And so these really highly tech, highly energized pieces are, um, you know, this is just uh, super, super vibrant in here. Uh, the way the different colors blend together and the way the the energy of the line on threads around it. And then you can see where I've gone back around to try to reframe and contain it. Even here, it starts to spill out. And so I'm containing this. And so the, the constant um, structuring of it is part of the process for me of bringing dreams to life. So there's a, there's an, a magical element of each of those and it goes with the emotion of the color and then the structure of the line, but giving my drawing hand uh, to the creatrix. Yet again, another, some of the really soft willow charcoal. You can see the sparkle just from the paper showing up. Oil paint stick, brushed on oil paint. This is oil. Arches oil paper, so it's a made in France mold made paper that has a resin in it that protects the fibers, the cotton fibers, from the oil. It would be framed under glass. And I floated them on the rectangles. I don't know how well you can, I guess you can see it best if I lay it down. Uh, it's intended to be framed with just a one inch float all the way around the outside. And um, like a one inch mat, and then a small, a small con uh, contemporary frame that will blend in with any decor so that it lets the energy of the art speak. It would be framed under glass though, because it is paper. <laughs> 